Okay, I'm from Box. You should see us on your badges. And I've got a secret to tell you. We've got dead code. Shouldn't be a real surprise if you've worked in any kind of stack, you've got dead code too. Dead code is a performance bottleneck. You have to ship it to the customer browsers, it slows you down in refactoring, and it's just worthless. Ghost code, zombie code. Why do you have so much code? In continuous deployment systems, the old code has to coexist with the new code until you transition over to new technology. No one ever removes the old code. Old code has one advantage. It probably doesn't work. Over time, as code is not exercised, the environment changes and it rusts away. Occasionally, though, it doesn't, and it's dangerous. So I was refactoring something, and I ran across this piece of code. I couldn't find how it was used, so I decided it was a zombie, and I could get rid of it. Of course, I did my due diligence. Grep, talked to my coworkers, did code review, checked the repository, and I decided it was dead as a doornail. So what did I do? Like any good engineer, I removed it. Gone. Didn't have to test it then either. Removed the code, checked it in, passed all unit tests, functional tests, monkey tests, everything under the sun. It was looking great until it went live. Then we had an emergency rollback about three seconds later as the use case for that code was discovered. Well, how did I miss that? Our code base at the time had some crufty parts of it. It had some very spooky incantations deep down in the code that created dynamic code paths. But the other part of the issue is that static analysis only gives you an incomplete signal. You can only depend on static analysis to tell you if code is referenced, not whether or not it's used. You can have a loop in your code that's all referenced, but none of it's used. So we needed a technique that combined both static and dynamic mechanisms. We call this technique tombstones. So now when we find code in the code base that we think is dead, we don't just blindly remove it. The first thing we do with it is we insert a tombstone. The tombstone has the current date, and it's a marker in the code to tell future engineers looking at this code that this may be dead. Now, when the code goes live, if the tombstones hit, it triggers a log entry. The log entries are harvested by a bot, and what's the bot do? It goes back to the source and removes the tombstone, because that code's not dead, it's proven to be alive. Now, in this case, this code hasn't been hit since 1999. Bye. So this was initially a manual technique, but then we extended it to be automatic, and we tombstone everything, every method in the code base. And then let the code go live, and the code starts reporting back. I'm alive, I'm alive. Over time, we have a really clear signal which code is dead. And based on that, we can deploy the normal mechanisms of untangling the spaghetti and removing the dead code. Life cycle of a tombstone. Every once in a while, we call for a harvest day where we go through the code base and take out, harvest the dead code. So you can see our code over time was growing and growing, and every time we have a harvest day, boom, code goes down. The overall trend is downwards. So we've used this technique on our server code, CSS, JavaScript, our templates, We've used it on branches as well as full methods. And most importantly, we used it on the office refrigerator. <laughs> and boy, was there some crusty stuff living in there. So the next time you think a piece of code is dead, oh, well, first off, this continuous destruction supports our continuous integration systems because we're always making room for the new code that's coming in. So the next time you think a piece of code is dead, don't just blindly remove it, just give it a tombstone. <laughs>